So today I am going on a hike um, completely by myself, which is new for me. Usually in the past, I've had at least my dog to go with, but since I'm up in college, I don't have my dog with me. So it's just me. Uh, none of my friends are available or anything. It should hopefully be an interesting hike. I don't actually know much about it. I looked it up quickly last night. It's called... <laughs> It's called Poco Moonshine, which is really funny to me. Um, but that's where I'm going. And apparently it's a three-ish mile hike. It should take roughly um, three hours to do from what I've read online. And apparently there's a really cool fire tower at the top, which I'm really excited for. I also have a uh, new camera I got recently. Um, I've been considering getting another camera uh, for a while. My DSLR is great, but for videos, it's really hard to use. It doesn't have a flip out screen, so it's really hard for me to be able to see what exactly is being recorded. And as well as, I can never get the colors right. And maybe that's just because I was trying to do everything in manual mode. But I just never liked how it looked on video. I still love it for photography and stuff. But for video, I felt it was a little lacking. So I picked up a, um, a new Sony, or new to me, Sony um, Handycam. I think it's CX675, I think is what it's called. Uh, but I'll look at it more and put it in the description of this video when I get back. So I just got here um, to the hiking spot. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys in a second, but so far I've learned two things. Um, apparently, you can rock climb here. So if you don't wanna walk up the mountain, you can just rock climb up. And the other thing, which I find really interesting, there's apparently peregrine falcons here. And personally, I really like peregrine falcons. Um, they're one of my favorite types of animals. Not even just flying animals, but actual animals. Maybe I'll get to see one, or get to see, or hear one maybe, who knows. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm using a new camera. Today, I'm gonna to be hiking Poke O Moonshine Mountain. That is what I will be hiking. I'm excited because there's a fire tower at the top. I'm also excited because this is the first time I'm testing out this camera. Um, I hope it comes out really well. I don't know how well my GoPro footage came out because I have a new setup for where my phone sits in my car. So it might be might have been blocking the GoPro footage I got. Um, if so, basically, I don't know much about this hike. I decided to go on it uh, to try out this camera. Also because I haven't gone hiking all summer even though I really wanted to. Also I'm in the Adirondacks and so might as well make good use of it. So, um, part of the purpose of this hiking video series is one, because I like doing it, but also because I want to try to show people different aspects of trails so they can kind of watch a video on it before they go do it themselves to figure out if it's a trail they want to do or not. That being said, back there, there was a spot for me to sign in to the park, but basically always try to sign in when you can. It helps, I guess, the people in charge maintain the trail see how many people actually use the trail so they know how to upkeep it properly. And also if anything happens to you, they have a record of who you are, where you were, where you're trying to go at least.
if I remember correctly, that white spot back there, someone would used to use it to collect water, I think? I remember going camping up in the Adirondacks years and years ago. We came across something similar. If I remember correctly, there's a spot where um, water was stored. I might not be 100% correct on that. So, I'm taking a break real quick. Um, <laughs> I am not if the most fit person at all. <sighs> There's a lot of stairs at this place. But now I'm just gonna catch my breath. Um, <sighs> I haven't even been here that long. But uh, it's quite an ascent. So, I'll just take it nice and slow for now. So I just took a nether rest stop. Um, I was able to get some uh, cell phone service. So I looked up, the trail is apparently about two and a half miles round trip. Currently I am 0.4 miles, which uh, isn't very encouraging. Um, I've been here roughly a half hour already. I was just really bad with stairs. And this trail so far is mostly stone steps. Which, I mean, it could be worse, but not great for me. <laughs> uh, it's almost as steep as uh, Overlook Mountain near Woodstock. I never filmed that one. I just did it with my friends a couple years ago. Never want to do it again, it was so steep. <sighs> but onwards we go. I just ran into two guys on the trail, and it was worrisome for me at first because I heard them before I saw them, and one of the first thoughts that went through my mind is, oh shoot, what if that's a bear? And like, you know, the chances of me running into a bear is probably pretty low, but what do you do if you see a bear? I don't know, I really don't know. Another rest stop, it's a lot steeper than I was expecting. Um, when I looked up this trail online, uh, a lot of the reviews said this was like a moderate trail. To be honest, for me, it's a bit more on the hard side. It's really steep and it's just continual up basically <sighs> while i'm here you know some of the reviews i saw said they had you know whole families coming up this trail and uh to be honest i find it a little hard to believe maybe i came up the wrong side of it or you know maybe maybe people up here are just a lot more fit than where from i'm from but this trail is uh i'd say a bit much for family one of the things that makes it interesting is a lot of the trail is also where the runoff for water um, from this mountain goes. So a lot of it is just wet, which isn't terrible, but, um, you know, bring decent shoes for the mud and stuff. And a lot of the other parts of this trail is rock, which uh, can be try kind of slippery to try to get up, uh, you know, when it's wet. <sighs> but for now, uh, I might as well keep going, I guess. On the road again. Uh, <laughs> Um, oh, the, what makes it a little scary right now is I am 0.55 miles up. Um, I think it's 1.25 miles to the top total. Um, so right now I'm just under halfway to the top. I've been here about an hour. Um, sun closes or sun sets in two hours. So I still gotta get to the top and turn back around and come back down before the sun sets, which currently worries me a little, but hoping I can do it, hoping I can do it. So I've been reading online that there's been a lot of trail maintenance to this recently, this trail, and I've seen lumber along the side of the trail a couple times 
So I wonder if they've added all these bridges and walkways recently. Um, I've said this in other videos, but my cameras don't do justice for what you actually see. So, you know, if you can and you like the looks of these videos, definitely try to go to some of these places because the views are incredible. So the beginning of this hike is really steep. Still pretty steep, but it was worse at the beginning. And I was sitting here to myself like, if this is moderate, how does anyone do any of the Adirondack high peaks, right? Like, God, I can't get up this and this is a moderate trail. Jeez, can you imagine actual mountains? But as I hike along, you realize why people do it. The views are astonishing. And I have a friend, um, Jonathan Sahar, I'll link to his YouTube channel. He makes hiking vlogs as well. And just um, recently did a video on his journey becoming a 46er. For those of you don't, who don't know, there's 46 Adirondack high peaks. A 46er is someone who's hiked all of them. And over the past couple of years, he's been making his mission to hike as many as he can, and he just did. Whew. Anyways, and like, man, that takes some dedication. Because those hikes are a lot longer than the one I'm on now. Take a lot longer than the one I'm on now. But people do it. People push themselves. Has to be able to say, it is something incredible. I think that's really amazing. So for, for the longest time, I wanted to try to hike the Appalachian Trail. If you don't know, um, the Appalachian Trail is a trail that goes from, I think like, North or South Carolina all the way through Maine. It follows the Appalachian Mountains, hence the Appalachian Trail. And uh, after doing this, I don't think I'm cut out for that, but there's a great book about a guy who did. It's called um, A Walk in the Woods. They also made a movie. The movie wasn't that good, but the book is. And so I definitely recommend trying to read it. I'll link to it in the description. And at this point, there's going to be so many things in that description. One other thing is uh, there's a lean to on this trail, apparently, which I have just come across. This is it. It's a, you know, pretty typical lean to. There's a fire pit right here. And a broom, which is always nice. Um, the ranger trail to campground is a mile and a half that way. I don't think I've walked a mile and a half from the beginning, so I don't know how accurate that is, but maybe I have. Um, if I have, then I was very wrong about where the top of this trail is. Observer's Trail to Route 9 is another two miles. All right, I think now is probably a good time for me to figure out where the hell I'm going. Um, but also, there's an outhouse over there. So, uh, yeah, a pretty cool spot, I would say. So, I'm sitting in the lean-to. Um, it's really peaceful here, and that's honestly quite an amazing feeling. Um, life is usually so stressful that it's nice to have moments like this. The reason I wanted to make a video, though, was because I found in the lean-to right up there, it's a waterproof container. And in the container is a notebook for people to write things to other people who stayed in this lean-to, or passed by it at least. And I came across these two um, sayings. Um, one, uh, two things this, these people wrote. 
Um, it's from today's date, so I think it might be the people I passed earlier. But um, what it says is, Who is it that opens me? For these mistakes you must pay the fee. In time you'll begin to see that your whole life will be misery. There's another quote that says, Keep on keeping on. And then one final one. You are either the lion or the gazelle. No matter what, you got to keep running. It's signed Stray Cat. Um, I don't know. I really like these quotes. There's a bunch, two other signatures in here from um, previous days and such, uh, from kids mostly, and it's uh, it's really cool to see. So I'm leaving the lean-to area. Um, I found the trail that continues. Um, the more I thought about it, the more I remembered reading that they did a second trail up here that's longer but less steep. And so that's what I think the other trail that was two point something miles was. I think that was the slightly longer but less steep trail. And the one I'm going on is the main one. I lean-to was really nice. I don't know. I really like lean-tos in general. And sitting there, it made me realize real life, day-to-day -day life, is really loud. And you don't realize that until you're out in the woods. It's a nice feeling. Also, I just came across this. It's like an old fireplace in my house of some sort. But there's a note here. Look at that! Only 0.3 miles away. I'll try to read a bit of this. And then I'll, uh, I'll update you on what it is. So this behind me. Um, apparently, it is the remnants of a cabin. The whoever manned the fire station or fire tower would stay in this cabin. And there's actually a smaller cabin nearby, or right next to it, um, that their family could stay in uh, while they were stationed here. And it burned down in 1993 likely due to a lightning strike and yeah I just always think it's really cool when you can find old pieces of history laying around especially old houses and stuff I, I find that amazing reading that some more the other trail which I assumed was the longer trail that they put in um, actually apparently used to be a road so four-wheel drive vehicles or ATVs um, could drive up here, um, I guess for whoever was manning the fire tower. But for now, it's a 0.3 mile walk to the top. Honestly, I can't believe I did it, but we're almost there. This view is absolutely breathtaking. I'm gonna to try to point it out in a second, but you can actually see the highway kind of winding through down there. It reminds me a little bit uh, from the movie Cars, um, where uh, you know once you get off the interstate a little bit, there's a whole other world out there, and uh, it's crazy. This is crazy. And here it is, ladies and gents. The fire tower. And we made it. I can't believe I made it up here. Um, I really didn't think I would, but I did. It was a bit scary towards the end, or sketchy, because the trail markers just disappeared from the last spot where the place burned down to the fire tower. Um, I saw maybe one trail sign in the point in three miles. So that was a bit scary, but it's there. Also, I find it funny now thinking about it that the fire tower's cabin 
burned down. <laughs> I think it's a bit ironic, but I hope this comes out on camera because check out this view. I personally think it's really cool to see how the road just winds through the mountains. It's, a, it's an interesting viewpoint that I haven't gotten before. Now it's time to go up the fire tower and hopefully the top is unlocked. Maybe not though, we'll see. <sighs> Crazy that over there you can can't even see the top of the mountains because it's in clouds. Really cool. Oop. Let's see. Yep. There's a lock. Yeah, completely locked. <laughs> Still, what an incredible view. So, at the top, I actually ran into a teacher. Um, he's in the fire tower. And I just hear and see this rustling coming up through the woods. And it was this guy who was coming running up this mountain that I could barely hike. <laughs> but no, he's a teacher from a nearby school district here. And so I got to speak with him a bit about the job and stuff. It was really cool. Seemed like a really cool guy. I'm probably going to try to help teach him a little bit. Or not teach him. <laughs> Sit in on one of his classrooms and see how he teaches. For now, I'm headed back down. It's 5.30. Um, I checked the time when I got to the top. It took me roughly two hours to go up. Hopefully going down is a lot easier because it's not uphill, it's downhill. And uh, yeah, I probably won't film much on the way down since I got a lot of it on the way up, but this is a great hike. Um, definitely suggest it. The first 0.6 miles or so, 0.7 miles maybe, pain in the ass. The last 0.3 is pretty steep, but the middle area is pretty great and talking with the teacher he came up from that other trail that was slightly longer and he said that one's a lot easier it's longer but the steep sections are followed by flat sections so you can kind of catch your breath a little bit and keep going we were both kind of shocked to run into each other because when he got up there i was um on top of the fire tower or as far as up as i could go so i come walking down <laughs> he was as shocked to see me as i was shocked to see him he does it every week apparently which is crazy to me, because like I said, I can barely hike this, much less run it. <laughs> yeah, man, people are amazing. Time to go down. The teacher actually had some pretty good words of wisdom. He said, the younger kids have more enthusiasm, but are generally worse students. And by that, he meant you have to keep on top of them a lot more. They'll lose their paperwork, you have to walk them through things, etc., etc. The older kids, great students. They know what they have to do and they do it. However, they have no enthusiasm. Makes sense to me. By the time you're a senior, you don't really want to be doing the school thing anymore. <laughs> he also said it's a lot more drama in the younger grades, especially with girls. He said he used to help mediate for a class period, and it would always, most of the time, be female students complaining that another female student was trash-talking them, and the second student would say the same thing about the first. <laughs> It was great to get to talk to someone who's in the field and get a bit of a um, understanding of what I'm in for. I have to say, overall, I'm really happy with this camera. It's been keeping my shots pretty level, or at least, you know, um, helping with the shaking. And I have to say, the zoom is in incredible like that shot I took earlier with the uh, road back there phenomenal phenomenal it's a little scary um, the woods are getting dark and so watch I get down this mountain as fast as possible um, I do not want to be in woods at night I have my phone and a backup battery um, for a flashlight but I still rather not be in the woods in the dark so here we go. Whew. You know what's crazy for me to think about is the odds of a specific event happening is so, so minuscule in life. So like, 
what got me thinking about this. For me to meet up with that teacher, I had multiple slow stops, or not slow stops, multiple long stops on my trip up. On top of that, before I even left, I spoke with my roommates for a half hour. Had neither of those, had I been in better shape, or had my roommates not been around, I would have never ran into this guy. I would have showed up too late. Or too early. I would have showed up earlier than he had. Had it not been raining yesterday, me and him both would have been hiking this mountain, but probably at different times. I would have gone during the day, and he would have gone after school because he's a teacher. On top of that, I had today and yesterday off from work, which, you know, there's a, I only get two days off a week, so for that to happen is incredible. And even beyond that, my school schedule had to line up so that I was free today. And there's just, I don't know, there's just so many things in life that have to go perfectly right for a certain outcome to happen. And that's just truly amazing to me. I mean, think about, think about the chances of you being born. Not just your mom and dad meeting, but their ancestors meeting, and their ancestors meeting, all the way back. And I figure, at some point, one of your ancestors probably met at a bar. And if that's the case, they had to decide to go to the bar that night. Maybe they weren't feeling well, but they were like, screw it, I'm gonna go to the bar. And then they met their wife, or at least the person that carried their kid. Um, I don't know. Well, that's just really fascinating to me. And, I don't know, it's just, it's crazy to think about. And this is one of the many things I like to think about. This is really cool. <sighs> um, update for hiking. It's getting darker, but... I'm recognizing more and more things, so hopefully I'm getting closer and closer to the bottom. Well, I must be getting closer and closer to the bottom. Hopefully I get to the bottom soon because it's getting darker and darker. Ooh, only 0.4 miles left. I want to point out that this section of the trail really hard coming down because water runoff runs right with this part, so everything's muddy and it's steep and it's rocks at odd angles. Definitely, if you're gonna do this, slow on the way down, be careful, try to wear the grippiest shoes you can find because I've almost slipped a couple of times and my shoes are almost brand new. So, be safe, guys. One interesting thing I wanna point out is as I get closer to the bottom of the mountain, the sounds of cars <laughs> become ever more clear. Whereas at the lean-to, you couldn't hear anything but nature. Um, and it was really nice. But now, I'm turning to civilization. It just sounds like a bunch of cars. All right. I am making it to the bottom right now. Um, don't forget, kids. Sign out of the park when you're done. Otherwise, someone might still think you're in there. And, uh... I made it. It's dusk, but made it back. Whew. It took me roughly three hours to do the whole trip. It took me about two hours to get to the top and one hour to get to the bottom, roughly. Two hours to the top was a lot of stops and very slow going for me. The way down was basically <laughs> a power walk um, the entire way. Um, so I made it back. Um, it was a great hike. Definitely suggest doing it if you're interested. Um, yeah, thank you for watching the video. I've made a new website, so I'll try to link um, to that. And yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe if you want. Thank you.